earlier. We had the uh, the Lunacode 2. We have we still have one left here in all yellow. So we do have a we couple minutes, in, maybe. Yeah, we do have a couple minutes, hopefully. So don't don't buy it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Seven thirty three twenty one. Uh, this again. This is the first time that uh, Vostok Europe has placed a um, a Swiss movement, and this is uh, from uh, Soprod. S O P R O D. Yep. Uh, it is a seven. There are seven micro motors inside of this movement mm -hmm. and uh, it's amazing that 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 video i watched was incredible when you put that on facebook to watch this we have only a handful left and only this model and this is the only model we have left 73321 the other model sold out the other colors sold out this is basically what seven watches in one. Well, really, that's yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is this is a has as, as Skip said, seven micro motors in this watch that run multiple independent functions. This watch, I'm going to quickly list what it, what all the functions are on this watch. It has a chronograph, and that is a split time chronograph that can time two events. It has a, a local time zone, and then you can have a secondary time zone. It also has a countdown of hours, so you can count down up to 12 hours, and a countdown of days. You can count down up to 31 days. Each and every one of the things I just mentioned can all run separately and independently of one another at the same time without interfering with one another. So you could literally have this watch counting down days, hours, and counting up on chronograph elapsed time while maintaining two separate time zones all at the same time. All of that is packaged in a watch that is a 300 meter diver, has a automatic helium release valve, and is the first watch I've ever seen with has stand up tritium tubes. Now, whoa, 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 okay. Stand up tritium tubes, usually you saw those tubes in our first watch. They were, mm -hmm. they were laying down, they were parallel with the dial. Right. Okay. These tritium tubes are actually standing up from the dial. They are perpendicular from the dial, mm -hmm. and that is an advanced lighting system. It's going to give you double the amount of illumination. Right, and, wh and that's why they did that. Not only do they stand up, which means you're getting a 360-degree exposure, because usually when you lay them down on the dial, you're actually hiding about half of the tube. That's right. Mm -hmm. Whereas standing them up this way, you're getting 360 degree exposure of the tube, yeah, and I mean. it's in a little reflective cone, almost like having it in a, um, yeah. like a candle holder. So if this is the tube, right. and it's laying down, you can't see the bottom half of the tube. The tubes on this dial are standing up like this, so you see the full illumination yep. of the tube. It's and it's, it's really interesting, you can see it when you, when you see these live, they're a little bit difficult to see on TV. Now, one thing I do want to say, guys, for those of you, some of, uh, you know, who are, are looking at this and you're like, wow, that looks like a complicated watch. It's not. It's not. Not. It's not. But it does take some getting used to. And it comes with a great manual. It has a great manual. Yes. And I will tell you guys, who, for those of you who follow me on Facebook and on Watch Geeks and other places, this coming weekend, I actually am going to do a how-to video on the watch myself, and I'll be posting that. The thing about it is, once you get used to it, I actually prefer it. It's once you get used to it, it's awesome. But it does behave differently than traditional watches do. You can tell just by watching as Skip is moving through the modes here. You've never seen a watch that behaves like no. this. And for one thing, you don't pull out the crown to set the time. And well, you pull out the crown, crown. to set the time, right. the main crown, but you don't turn it like turn you do. It, right. You actually have to push the other buttons. I actually equate it to, uh, it's similar to like when you set your alarm on an alarm clock that you have in your room, you know how you have to set it to set the alarm and then you push a button and it moves forward. Right. Well, that's the same thing that happens here. You'll pull it out and then you're gonna push another button to set the time. Once you get used to these things about it, you're actually gonna fall in love with the way this operates because after you're comfortable with it, it's really not that difficult to now, use. Now these are the modes right over here mm -hmm. and what they did, this company, Silpro did, was make sure that you can go from mode to mode to mode just by pressing the crown. So I'm gonna press the crown once and it goes up to the chronograph. Then it goes to the secondary time zone, for example. Then you have countdown hour, countdown day, and you also have a perpetual yearly calendar. Yes, it has a perpetual calendar up to 2099 in this watch. Um, and you can actually, you actually have the ability to set it at what year you are past leap year yes. when you're setting the date. So it will know when it's time to change 31 days versus 30. Comes Leather with strap. an additional strap. Yeah, and the box. And this one, I will tell you, 
one of the things that people uh, asked us was, look, the Anchar, while we love the different straps and it's a fantastic watch, it is a little bit challenging to change Oops, hold on. the strap on the Anchar because you have yep. to have the two screwdrivers. So Igor and his team got together and they created a whole new system with this one where you only need one screwdriver. You take the one screwdriver, you unscrew the, the, um, the screw heads on either side, and then you actually pull, the, the bar actually stays inside the strap when you pull yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. Then you take the bar out, put it in the other strap, and put the new strap on. It's, it's really easily. It Easy may not last. Now, why is it called the Lunacode? Yes, it is called the Lunacode. Because? because? The Lunacode 2, actually, was a uh, Soviet lunar rover. And that was the inspiration. The whole idea behind this watch and why they chose the Lunacode 2 as a name was, and the inspiration was to create a watch, as they say, that could be used in any condition, from deep diving literally to open space. And you're looking here at this is a picture of the actual inspiration. This is an unmanned rover that spent many, many, many years on the lunar surface that the Russians built, and yeah, that like is the inspiration. Yeah, like 40 years ago, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah it's still up there. When, yeah, I mean, but when, yeah. They, when they launched it 40 yep. years ago. Yep. And then one other thing about this, too, just get to getting back to the quality of construction of everything, this is oh yeah, the configuration of the dial. Look at this. One, that's the, be, the bezel, the stadium. There's the stand-up tubes. There's the base. There's the top dial, then the base dial. One, two, three, four, five separate pieces. Can you, can you this, show them the stand-up tritium tubes level, that third one? Can you see where those are actually vertical? Yeah, there you go. There you can see it. And yeah, the, thanks, Jason. And the dial, the very bottom dial, is electrically etched to look like the surface of the moon. That's now, crazy. Skip and I were talking earlier. If, you, if you're not familiar with the SOPOD movement, which, by the way, is yeah. just an amazing piece of technology, there actually is a microchip in there. Um, and, oh, and I have had several people ask me, it, it's still protected by the same two-year warranty that our company protects. We're getting all the parts and training that we need for our <laughs> watchmaker here in the yep. United States to take care of it if there were to be any issue. But this is an extremely, extremely solid movement. Um, but I haven't seen anywhere a watch with the Soprod micro motor movement in it at under a thousand. I mean, I, I just, I don't think it's out there. Here. You've sold uh, uh, EDOX and TAGs here with the Soprod movement mm -hmm. at, at multiples of this. Yeah, exactly. By you the know. way, the, the uh, tritium tubes are also Swiss made, MB Microtex. Yep. MB Microtex. If you want to look that up, they make the tritium tubes, and that way you can do a little research on what a tritium tube is, why does it stay lit for 10 years and longer, sometimes longer. Uh, and this way you do not need to activate it by putting it under the sunshine or light or anything like that. Now, we have 90 seconds, but Dave, my producer. Do we have any left? We have single digits. Okay. Now, <laughs> we are actually supposed to be presenting this in our next hour, which yeah, we may not. <laughs> so we sold out of the other model before we even got to it. Thank you very much, Craig Hester. <laughs> And Tim Temple. And then uh, this model we have, we have sold out the red one before we got to it. We have the yellow dial only. Now, why is this a little bit more than that first one real quick? Well, the, this is actually a very heavy black IP plating on both of these. Why this one was a little bit more is because of the complexity of this watch. There was just no way to sell these at the same price between the non-plated and the plated because there's just so much plating mm -hmm. on this watch. And what is this over here? And one then more you've time? got the extra plating on the helium release valve because you, you've even you know you've got dual plating on here. You've got yeah. the black and you've got the the the, the two-tone plating. There's just a lot of plating going on on this. You know the funny thing to me, Skip, is I thought the bright yellow dial would be the first I did one too. to go. To be honest with you, I did too. I knew that was my guess. Yeah, because I've been wearing right the, I've been wearing the the bright yellow one, and I got to tell you, at it's the so airport many we have the left. other day. At the airport coming in here, four left. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at the airport coming in here, yeah. I, this watch got noticed by no less than six people. I bet. I mean, it, it just, and I, every time I'd go, it's like nothing you've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you remember Henry Graves of 1933, he wanted to make the most complicated watch ever. I think he just got beat. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> if I you know so. what I mean.